This is the story of what happened when I set out to change the nation's attitude to its favorite meat, chicken. Please take the store. I, I didn't say anything. I wanted the supermarkets to commit to improving the welfare of the hundreds of millions of birds they sell each year. It is, it is the art of corporate prevarication. And I wanted shoppers everywhere to stop buying intensively farmed birds and choose free range instead. No, you don't care? Unable to get unfettered access to an intensive chicken unit, I set up my own experimental farm. Oh God, you're big. And at times, it was pretty intense for me too. We've got another one here. Oh there. I had fun introducing supermarket shoppers to the joys of poultry husbandry. Hey, hey, what's in store? <laughs> Yo. I bet I can guess what the other two are called. I bet you can't. But I knew that if I was going to bring about lasting change, I'd need all the help I could get. I am challenging you, Axminster, to be the first free-range town in Britain. I had decided to call my campaign Chicken Out. It was all about persuading my local town of Axminster to go free range by showing them some of the realities of commercial chicken farming. So I decided to set up my own experimental poultry farm, rearing two crops of chickens which would lead very different lives. Free range, yeah. intensive. I needed to recreate as closely as possible the commercial conditions for rearing both types of birds. I'm very, very disturbed about these. We do anything wrong in here that, that the industry's going to be all over us. But with 4,000 chicks ordered and on their way, there was no going back. With the help of poultry stockman John Kirkpatrick, we worked night and day to get it ready for the start of the experiment. They're all sleeping, they're all ready to go. The experiment starts now. Two weeks in, with just three weeks left till the intensive birds are gathered up for slaughter, I was struggling with my new role as an industrial chicken farmer. The daily ritual of boiler suits, boots, disinfectant and rubber gloves wasn't exactly my idea of farming. But worse than that was the sheer stress of being responsible for the lives of 4,000 birds. All right, chicks, how are you doing today? My God, you're big. It's day 13, and they're really starting to get large. You know, you can really feel, you can see the weight of them now. And it's just constant eating. And it's tap, tap, tap all day long. Every, every feeder is a sort of full station of birds eating. And the smell is starting to get very strong. I mean, it's basically eye-watering smell of ammonia now because the litter is getting full of their shit. The 2,300 standard birds were only half the story. At the other end of the shed, in the same size space, were another 1,600 birds being raised as free range. Right, commercial free range flocks get various indoor extras. This is where I start to feel a bit guilty. Uh, that was, that was where you about started to do Spoiling work. one side, giving them something the other guys are not going to have. Uh, exactly. It's called environmental enrichment. So we, put, we just put them a long way here. How many we've got? 11 or so? We're 10 or 11? 10 or 11 deals. Unlike the intensive deals. birds, which are selectively bred to eat constantly, the, the free rangers come from stock more suited to an active outdoor life. And although they were too young and vulnerable to be allowed to go outside yet, these extra features will help them express their instinctive behaviour. They're already using the drinker lines. Oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. These, wow. guys, these guys are easily bored. That's interesting because I didn't see any of the standard birds perching on the uh, drinker lines. Standard birds are too heavy. Really? Too heavy to perch? Too heavy to perch. Already? Oh. Really. So who's for football then? <laughs> Straw bales, footballs, and compact discs may seem a curious combination of poultry playthings, but they've all been shown to engage the birds, reducing stress and aggression in the flock. And in a way, it just seems a pity that it's the free-range birds who are getting it, because 
quite soon they'll have the potholes open and they'll have the whole of outdoors to play in. Whereas the standard birds aren't going to get anything. Another vital element of my campaign was the project on the Millway Estate in Axminster, helping a group of regular cheap chicken buyers to care for some birds of their own on the nearby allotment. They were a great gang and everyone pitched in from the start, but it was soon clear that for some, the experiment didn't seem relevant to their weekly shopping trip at the Axminster Tesco. Is there any connection there at all? Yeah. No. Really? No. None whatsoever. It's what my pocket can afford, and I don't take no notice. Good evening! The project had clearly brought the group together, and ironically, the most die-hard cheap chicken chomper, Hayley, had become the group's self-appointed mother hen. And um, as far as the pennies go, who wants to go and buy our chicken feed tomorrow? Well, I've got to go in town, so I might as well do it when I sell more lays on. But others yeah. in the group right. were bonding with the birds almost too much and seemed to have forgotten that they were destined for the dinner table. Yeah, he's got a little character, that chicken. Yeah, yeah. He comes and says hello, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. At least you know where they are. He was, he was running around my leg in my trouser yesterday. <laughs> Jamie's used to, that's what it is. You haven't named it, have you? They're not good. It turned out she'd done exactly that. Yeah. Her favourite bird had been named Chuffy. I think there might be some tears when that one goes over there. The one with the black on the top, because he's really friendly. And I don't know. I think I might have to save him. <laughs> I'm deaf. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jane's partner, Dave, was becoming an enthusiastic amateur observer of chicken behaviour. I'm sure they are intelligent. Come on, you know, man. they've got a memory. Come on, man. All right, you're getting some. Why are they following me up here like this? And why are they following me back like this? You know, they know there's something good on the end of it, surely. Worms, insects and stuff. Oh, don't tease them anymore, Dave. But, I mean, that just proves, surely, they've got a memory. Ready? My local chicken projects were part of a bigger vision, to change chicken production on a national scale. And to achieve that, I was searching for a dialogue with Britain's supermarkets. I'd approached the eight biggest food retailers in the land, but so far the response was, to say the least, underwhelming. Hi, is that uh, Asda? I wrote to Andy quite some time ago, and you know I haven't even had a reply. You, you, you left us dangling, you did indeed, yeah. Hi Elaine, is Debbie around? If you could give her my mobile, I'll, I might be on a train, but if she can... Cheers, bye bye. No reply from waitress at the moment. Tesco had already said that they wanted to meet, but Summerfield seemed to have made up their minds about poultry welfare already. We do not believe that there is any sense in encouraging producers to develop their business in a direction that would not be sustained by our customer base. They don't want to discuss it. Apart from anything, I think that's quite insulting to Summerfield's customers. The supermarket's rebuttals were disappointing but I wasn't going to give up yet. Back on the farm, it was day 19. Stockman John was in charge of the everyday running of the shed, including loading up the hundreds of kilos of food that these birds were now consuming every week. The free-range birds had taken to their environmental enrichment with great gusto and things were about to get even better for them with their first taste of the outdoor life they were born to enjoy. But this was no smallholders chicken run, it was a commercial free-range crop run according to industry guidelines. We had to make sure we had a range around the shed suited to the bird's needs. It's not, it's not very rustic, though, is it, uh, I mean, that's, that's very good. It's perfect if you're trying to start a croquet lawn or you want to... That's better than we all know at home. That's... Quite liberally. We're here just in the bark, even at the back here. Yeah. Shade is important to encourage the birds out onto the range. We didn't have time to grow trees, so we improvised with pallets and cut branches. 
It's not bad, is it? No. But I couldn't help worrying that my birds might decide they preferred their comfy indoor life. What if they don't like this little garden of Eden that we've created for them? What if they don't like our lovely corner of Surrey? He won, and halfway through my attempt to show consumers what life is like for supermarket chickens. With nothing to do but eat, my 2,300 standard birds were piling on weight and starting to fill their half of the shed. And I was feeling increasingly uneasy. And the really weird thing is, my left foot is currently for these birds environmental stimulus. It's making their life more interesting that I have, that I'm standing here. There's nothing here for the chickens except what is directly associated with turning them into meat. The free range side felt altogether different. Each bird had more space for a start, as well as straw bales to perch on and footballs and CDs to peck at and play with. But above all, there was simply more activity. An instantaneous visual check at the window between the two sheds here. We've got 90% of the birds in there lying down, and 70, 80% of the birds in here standing up and running about. I've got to tell you something, there's no significant difference in temperature between the two. And the contrast between life in the two flocks was about to get much greater. After three weeks inside, the free-range birds were about to be granted what I believe should be basic rights for every farm animal. Fresh air, the sun on their back, and grass under their feet. In other words, the freedom to live a natural life. Come on, little birdies. Who are you be scaring them back on there again? It wasn't exactly the dash for freedom I'd been hoping for. But then... Hey! Congratulations! My God! He's not only out, he's flying! Are you sure the fences are high enough, John? Did you see that? He went about two foot up in the air. You are right there? He's glad to be outside. One brave bird, only 1,599 to go. But I was heartened as one more and then another gingerly followed the plucky pioneer outside. It's a good feeling, isn't it? It is, it is. It's a really good feeling. It's nice just to see, you know, this, this quick look outside at the, the, the sunlight and then once they get a wee bit bolder and a wee bit braver, diving out through the door. But I think as, as the afternoon wears on, hopefully they'll venture right out. Tesco is the biggest and most powerful food retailer in Britain and in Axminster. They alone could improve welfare for millions of chickens, so I was desperate to get them to engage with my campaign. Hello, it's Hugh Fernie Whittingstall here. They were taking my calls, but what I really wanted was for them to agree to a filmed meeting. Love. I, mean, you, I mean, I'd love an opportunity, even if it was just for five minutes. Of course, I wouldn't necessarily expect you to, to, to sign up to any any harebrained scheme of mine on the day that we meet. I don't think anyone feels that, that, this, that this meeting has to be a secret from, from the wider world. But it was all talk and no action. Hi Emma, it's Hugh here. Hi, how, how are you doing? You know, we've been obviously been trying to, to get this uh, lined up for a while. I mean, we started- It was frustrating. Tesco were happy to talk to me about poultry welfare. Next week. All right, thanks a lot, Emma. Just Cheers. not with bye the bye. cameras rolling. Over at the Millway Chicken Run, Dave was worried. His poultry manual had alerted him to a problem with one of the birds. Chickens eat a large variety of things. Droppings may occasionally become runny. However, if you notice that your chicken has dirty feathers around a vent, which we did, there may be something more serious wrong with her. In such circumstances, a trip to the vet is a wise precaution. That one. Bloody hell. You got any gloves? No, I didn't bring my gloves in there. What are you going to do there? Well, I just think it needs a bit of cleaning up. All right, Chessie, come on. That's probably not the best way to do it, but... 
I think it's all just matted there. I've never done this before. Wipe the chicken's bottom. It's like when you've got kids of your own. You can change their bottoms, but you couldn't change anybody else's. Oh! I go out and dig them. Oh, Dave, what are you doing? I'm just trying to clean it up. <laughs> He's definitely got the run, hasn't he? Millway Rise Football Club coach Herman was also responding to my poultry challenge and along with his wife Maria, rethinking his attitude to chicken. We're well into it now, aren't we, love? Oh, I love it. It's really good. It, it's just a different direction. A few weeks yeah. earlier, this family was routinely buying two birds for a fiver, but that was changing. When I go to Tesco to buy chicken and that, I think I would think a bit more about how they've been sort of reared and, you know, whether they've had a happy life or whatever. You know, as long as free range wasn't too expensive, I think I would prefer to have um, free range chickens and also eggs as well. The Millway project was doing just what I'd hoped, encouraging those who'd never given the life of a chicken a second thought to reconsider the kind of birds they would choose to eat. If only I could get the whole town rearing chicken, or even the whole country. What I did have to show the rest of Axminster was my experimental chicken farm. And working with John, I got to see the relentless business logic of rearing both intensive and free-range birds on this kind of scale. John had poultry farming in his blood. The daily inspection of the stock and the routine culling of birds that were showing signs of injury was something he seemed to take in his stride. This bird basically had leg problems. A lot smaller than the rest, hasn't developed as well, and like this bird has the potential of disease risk for the rest of the flock. So at the end of the day, there's only one way to deal with birds like this, is to basically mainly cull them. You know, these birds are of no financial value uh, to, the, to the producer, to the farmer, to the processor, or to the supermarket. So it's key that these birds are taken out and that we send a consistent crop for processing. So basically what we do, we take the bird down to the side, and we just break the neck clean. And you'll have involuntary flapping, which is just the muscles expanding and contracting. The neck is completely broken. And that's it. That bird's dead. As well as the daily clearance of dead or injured birds in both houses, there was routine vaccination through the automatic drinker system, testing the litter in the sheds for salmonella. Regular weighing of the birds. And we buy 700 grams to check that they were on target to make their commercial weight. Last bird, John. Excellent. But every time it came to my turn to walk the sheds on my own, I was filled with foreboding. Morning, keepers. Come on, show me you can move. I could see that it made sense to remove sick and injured animals from the two flocks. However, what I still couldn't get my head around was the practice of killing underweight birds just because they were unprofitable. This bird is half the weight of some of the birds in here. But, you know, it's lively and it's perfectly healthy and... Look at him. He's probably not going to make the weight at the end of 39 days. He probably really won't be a, a decent eating size at all. So, economically speaking, that arguably should be a cull bird, but I'm not going to do it. It was clear from the start that the biggest obstacle preventing people switching to free range was price, and that was certainly true of the Millway gang. I hoped that if I could show them how to make a bird go further, free range might seem a little more affordable. So I borrowed Jane and Dave's garden to cook up an alfresco chickeny treat. Am I going to do this standing up while you're sitting down? God. Here's the leftovers of a lovely free-range roast chicken. And I reckon we can get another meal. For how many of them up? For about five. Really? I reckon so. My plan was to use the leftover meat to make a crowd-pleasing risotto. a nice dish I'm going to put in here. And sometimes I've seen people throw chicken carcasses away without turning them upside down and looking at what's under here. That's the best bit. No, it looks... 
I got the gang to shell some wild cob nuts I gathered. To squeeze together. While I finished picking the bones clean. All that meat that he's got off that carcass. Let me put yours to the bone. I've quit mine. No, no, no. I don't. How easy? I just take the breast off. I'm paying money. I want to make I sure I get it. I just take the breast off and that's yeah. it. And of course, the skin and bones aren't thrown away. Combined with a few veg and some herbs, they make chicken stock, which is the basis for all manner of hearty soups and stews, as well as risotto. A risotto is like a sort of blank canvas. You've got onions and rice and stock, and into that you can add all sorts of different things. And this is Italian risotto rice. It expands and it's very rich. Is that will double in size now? At least treble, really. And you actually fry the rice also in the buttery onion. I just need to get the stock pretty quickly before that burns. But you keep calling me a windbag. <laughs> now, here comes the hot stock. Chicken, Hugh. Yeah, don't worry, because this is just going to come to the rescue now. Have a look how quickly the rice is swelling up, because within three or four minutes, Blimey. it's time to add a bit more stock, you see, you just keep tipping it in little by little. Not going to oh, look at that, look at that. What a mess you made. Oh, goodness, what a clutch. <laughs> in goes the chicken, in goes the wild nuts, and the sweet corn. You could yeah. add mushrooms and things like that. You could add mushrooms, bacon, that's definitely going to feed at least five, isn't it? At least. Very good. Well, that might be a bit optimistic. That's what I thought. Sure enough, with just a couple of quid's worth of extra ingredients, our chicken leftovers went a long way. I think we've got, you know, six plus there, six really good servings. Jane and Dave, I think you should have the first plate full. Thank you very, Thank you very, very much. much. But it's not just about squeezing value from your bird. Excellent. Very good, really good. Yes. It's lovely. Nelly. 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 <laughs> the juice, the, the stock, it just makes it all oh, beautiful. With even Haley impressed, it felt like I was a step nearer to a free range revolution. Good birds. Up at the shed, it was the fifth day of outdoor life for the free rangers. Night time. And John was putting them to bed. As the evening draws in, free-range chickens naturally head inside for warmth and protection. Good luck. At least that's what's meant to happen. This is going to be interesting. These guys were so enjoying their freedom that they'd already worked out Whoa. how to beat the electric fence. There we go. Stop. And John. Come on, you little shit. Go on. Yep. Shark it on, birds. Come on. Lord, no. Don't go through the fat. <laughs> Good birds. You as well. Good birds. Eventually, the birds Thank tired you know. of their game of dodge the poultryman and called it a day. Last one. Free range are definitely good for the health. There's no doubt about that. Standard birds, you were sitting in the house watching Coronation Street at this moment in time. Three range, you're running through trees every hour of the day, trying to get them guard up. It was time to take my chicken out campaign to the next level. I wanted to get the whole town of Axminster on side. So I decided to call a public meeting and I went along to the town's guild hall to check it out as a suitable venue. Goodness me. It's rather marvellous. It's got a very strange acoustic. Hello? Chicken! Chicken out! Chicken out! Well, if I'm trying to gather as much of Axminster as I can in one space, which is clearly the place to do it, but would anyone really want to come and hear me lecturing them about chicken welfare? You know, I'm one of those people who, who I care what other people think. I don't, want, I don't want to be disliked or I don't want people to think I'm 
I'm annoying or, or a busybody or, or, or a bully or, or whatever. You know, part of me wants to run away. Part of me wants to just go home and look after my own chickens and have a nice time and be with my family and, and not get involved in, in this whole public thing. Chicken out! Bloody hell, what am I doing? In my bid to make Axminster a free-range town, I had visited one of its biggest employers, Axminster Power Tools, to see if I could help turn their canteen into a free-range haven. Dinner ladies, Rosie and Val, have been stuck in a menu rut of spaghetti on toast, microwave pies, and frozen omelette. Well, I can still put it in the microwave and give it a quick flash. I think I'll pass on that. <laughs> so I'd showed them how easy, satisfying, and profitable it could be to knock up a free-range roast dinner and fill the canteen with happy customers. It's beautiful. It's really got a nice flavour for it. Three weeks later, I came back to see if it had all sunk in and whether this might be one of the first success stories for my Chicken Out campaign. Hi there. How are you getting on? Spot check from Health and Hygiene. <laughs> it's busy. Yeah. Hi, Rosie. Hello. How's it going? Very well, thank you. Yeah. And, and what tray is that wonderful looking pie? That is a chicken and ham pie made over from the leftover chicken that we roasted yesterday. You did roast chicken yesterday? Yes, we did indeed. And made a ham and chicken pie today? Yes. yes. And dare I ask, was the chicken free range? Oh, indeed it was, yes. Yes! <laughs> you know what, it looks, it looks a lot tidier and more organised in here than when I came and roasted some chicken. That's funny, we said that yesterday as well. Really? It was nice to see you, but you made a mess. I was thrilled to see real home cooking on the menu, but was it selling? Thank you. How many pre-orders have you had of the chicken pie today? Like 25. 25? Yeah. And how many roast chicken did you do yesterday? That was five times the take-up than when I first came in. Rosie and Val had made a huge success of this canteen, and to my delight, they'd done it with free-range chicken. Nick, do you want extra gravy on yours? It's a fantastic sight. Completely heartwarming, and actually makes me extremely hungry. Is this what a chicken pie should be? If Axminster Power Tools Canteen could become a beacon of real food and ethical eating, then there was surely hope for the rest of town. And it's delicious. It was four weeks since I'd set up my experimental farm to show local people some of the realities of commercial chicken production. What I'd, what I'd like to do is get you all togged up. Today I was welcoming you. its first visitors, so the, best thing, really, the Millway Gang. You all... It's one size fits all, I'm afraid. <laughs> I hoped that the contrast between the life of the chickens they'd been looking after on the allotments and my broiler house birds would make irreversible converts of them. Okay, can you put those on your feet? <laughs> You're ready for anything, you are, aren't you? Just up the bottom, yeah, that's it. First, I wanted them to have a look at my flock of free rangers. So you can see they can't wait to come out, look. They're flapping their wings. And everyone had a chance to inspect the inside accommodation, too. Oh, it's great. As I said, I think they all look like they've got plenty of room to walk around and everything. Then came what I hoped would be the clincher, a tour of the intensive shed. So things are a little bit different in here. You, you have to walk very carefully. Come on this way, into this one. First in were Merv and Jane. The first of the matter is, these are being bred for that purpose. They know no different. Yeah, but what life they've got, look. Well, they're happy enough. They're not. They're making them chirping away. Yeah, but that's what chickens do, isn't it? When they get bigger, Mer, there's not going to be any space. Look. Oh, it's horrible. 
You find it upsetting. And I think if a lot of people saw that, they would not eat those birds. I'm sure they wouldn't, even if they were that cheap. But they gave them away, even. I wouldn't eat it. It's just horrible. I'll tell you what, Hayley, if you eat chickens after going in there... Of course I will. You won't. Next up, Maria and her kids, Charlie and Jenny. What do you think, guys? It's just, it's just so sad they don't ever get to see daylight. And they're in, well, they're all squashed in here, and they've got food and water, but I just think it's a shame that they never get to have a little run around. You're right, Right. Yeah, that, that's when we come to number. <laughs> I didn't like upsetting people, but in a way that was the point. It was everyday choices in the supermarket that meant animals were being treated this way. I'm dreading this now. Because they walk about crying and... My dad want to. <laughs> if you could just come down this aisle a little bit. Next, Claire and the person I most wanted to get through to, Hayley. This is as, as close as we can get to standard boiler house production. It's about a tenth of the size of a normal house. And it's rather bastard, really. What do you think? Well, it expected. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'll all work. What I expected. No light, food and water. We know that they're cooped up with no daylight. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people here today, including, you know, your friends from the allotment, are shocked and surprised by what they've seen, and they don't really know what they're buying. The only, the only thing that's different from free range is they're not going outside. That's right. Well, well, we're what a thing, eh? What a thing. Well, that's, I mean, the that's only what thing that's about. different. Yeah. This is what it's about. That's the whole idea of having found a chicken, so they don't go outside. So why is it so shocked? No, no, no. The whole idea is not that they don't go outside. The whole idea is that they're really cheap. If you For people's pockets, like mine, you sure. can afford the free range. I can't. This is what I. This is what I can afford. It's not as bad as I thought, but still not nice. They put in the fed water and got heat. Oh, not nice. Oh, the fed their water. They've got a bit of light. They've got no light for outside. They're not scutting around. I, I can see that. It's nice that they are outside, but that's what they're about. That's what it's all about in there. That's bloody reality. If you were a chicken. Where would you choose to live? In here? If I didn't know any different, it'd be there. If I didn't know any different, I'd be in there. If you were a chicken, where would you choose? Would you choose to live in here? Or would you choose to I live over... That. Why? Because they don't have a choice. No, I'm just asking you. Where yeah, but I couldn't. I couldn't answer it. Just make a choice. Between there or here? Well, then they're going to be eaten, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> just tell me. But I'm going to be eaten, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> but there's no difference, then, between the two. The only difference between the two is the free range get to run outside. They're being fed, they're being watered, they've got heaters in there. Bum bum. By the end of the tour, Hayley was out on a limb. Everyone else, including her son Connor, found the experience distressing. What have you seen there? Huh? Lots of chicken. No? I like the look of that one. Having shown them how both free-range and intensive birds are produced, I wanted to remind the gang how the two types of chicken are packaged and sold in the supermarkets. Did they think the messages on the labels reflected the reality of the birds' lives? The birds along here have all lived a similar life. None of them are reared outdoors. None of them have got straw bales, no frills. It's all standard production of one sort or another. How easy is it to tell that just by looking at the labels? No, at all. Uh, Labelling is quite confusing. Yeah, but that's misleading, surely. You mean the wheat field? Yeah. And the, yeah. yeah. And I agree that for a standard bird, that is giving a subliminal message of outdoorsiness. Yeah. It's not right, is it? No, it's misleading. You think, oh, it's an outside chicken. Can I just say, going with the prices, like the Tesco small one, and there's, there's only two pound difference. And if it feeds four of you, that's 50 pence each, isn't it? That's right. 50p a head. Mm. 50p a head to go free range. I think that's pennies, personally. 
there's nothing in it. I mean, it's not. I'm a single parent with two children. That is what fits my budget. That might be yours, but that's not, that's not mine. That's mine. Pricing and labelling were two of the many things that I really wanted to talk to the supermarkets about. Hi there, it's Hugh, finding Whitting Stool on Wednesday. Uh, I hope to hear from you. Cheers, bye. Still top of the agenda was my quest for an on-camera interview with the biggest of them all, Tesco. Very We'd really like to try and make something happen in September, in the next, in the next four weeks. Hi, Hugh Fernie Whittingstall here. And when at last there was a glimmer of hope, it quickly faded. But, but Joe, you know, this is a backtrack. You did, you did verbally offer me that date for an interview. You did say, uh, no, Joe, that, that is truly ludicrous because we've been asking since the beginning of the summer. And you, and it was starting to feel like this particular quest might never end. It was only three days for the Guildhall meeting where I was planning to challenge the whole town, but the day job was getting in the way of my preparations. As well as commitments at my farm and cookery school, I had a shop for local produce about to open in town, and the local press were keen to talk to me about it. At least it was a chance to plug the campaign too. Next Friday evening in the Guildhall, I want to have a meeting to tell people about what we've been doing at Millway. I was haunted by the thought of turning up at the Guildhall for the launch of my chicken out challenge to the whole town and finding it empty. So I drafted in the Millway gang to help with the publicity. I'm going to say, come and meet our chickens. Lads, meeting in the Guildhall tomorrow night, the chickens out. And wherever I went, I left a poster and a stack of leaflets behind me. It really does make a noise like a chicken, this door. I've got to... We had 6,000 people to reach. Right then, can I give you one of those? Thanks a lot. Right. And still, I had to do my tour of duty at the chicken shed. My goodness. Right. Day 29, morning stock check. I find this job more and more uncomfortable because the birds are more and more reluctant to move like they're just waiting to die waiting to be killed rather they've got less and less room to move and they just do nothing except eat, drink and sit down uh oh the smaller bird here that seems as being a bit almost trampled on. This one. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh. You know, I can't even make it get up. Ah, oh, my heart sinks. I'm going to take it straight out and do it outside. I knew that tens of thousands of chickens die or get culled every day in Britain's poultry farms. But that didn't make it any easier for me to kill one of mine. That's a dead bird. I 
really don't want to kill another bird this morning. <laughs> Today, it had been my turn to add two more birds to the national tally. It was the day of the Guildhall meeting in Axminster, and I'd been having nightmares about launching my chicken out campaign to an empty hall. But I was excited by the prospect of the day's visitor, who I felt sure could help my mission. Hi there. Welcome to Devon. You look lovely. You're looking very well. You look like you're running a nuclear power station. By showing Jamie my experiment, I hoped he would decide to add his considerable influence to the cause. Have you currently got an upset stomach or enteric illness? No. Phew, what a relief it is. <laughs> okay. If you come around the other side of the house, we have actually got a, a shade tunnel here. First, I introduced Jamie to the free rangers. You can see these birds are all upright, quick on their feet. Yeah, lovely feet. See that one that looks like he's, he's got black and white feathers? Yeah. That's literally, he's just been having a dust yeah, bath. Yeah, they love that, don't they? Absolutely. It turned out that he too had been trying and failing to gain access to an intensive farm. This would be his first ever encounter with birds reared in this way. Oh my giddy on. Why are they not standing up? They haven't it got is. anywhere to move. Oh my god. Good for freedom behind me. They're very top heavy, aren't they? They're, sort of, they're almost like they're drunk. That's it. Very few of them walk from very far. You know, they walk to the feeder, feed, sit, sit, down, sit down again. Straight down again. After weeks on the same litter, the birds often develop hot burns. You just turn them upside down, we have a look at his top. But there, you've got the beginnings of a slight redness. These are injuries to their legs caused by the high levels of ammonia in their feces. That's hot marks rather than hot burns. I mean, they're incredibly unfit freaks of nature. Nature would have never ever gulped at the genetics of a bird like this, would it? No, it's, it's, um, this could only be man-made, a bird like this. It would never happen. And, and this, no, this represents everything that's awful about... Well, it's, it's an accountant's dream, really, isn't it? That's the truth. It, it's business. But, I mean, from a cook's point of view, how excited can you get about this, Jamie? Well, having just said Ch seen Charlie shit over his mate, no, no, I don't want to cook him. It's filthy. I mean, the whole thing is filthy, not just the floor. It's not right, is it? One visit did the trick. Jamie became a signed up member of the Chicken Out campaign and promised to help me wherever he could. I had just two hours left before the Guildhall meeting. Time to do a bit of last minute flyering at Tesco. Hi there, can I just give you one of those? Thanks a lot. Spending a lot more time at Tesco than I used to. Hi there, can I give you one of those? Thanks a lot. Can I just pop a few of them here, next to the lottery tickets? See, obviously the shot here is to film this and pan down to every little house. Spot on. This was the crunch. By the end of the evening, I'd know if my campaign would have any chance at all. I can honestly say this is the most nerve-wracking thing I've ever done. If I could convert all the people in this room, and they could convert their family, friends and neighbours around town, then maybe, just maybe, Axminster could set an example to the whole country, and life for millions of chickens could change for the better. I felt very alone as I walked into the hall.
Thank you. Thank you very much for coming here this evening. It's fantastic to see so many of you here. Tonight, as I think most of you know, is all about chickens. And the idea is simple. I am challenging you, Axminster, to be the first free-range town in Britain. Having thrown down the gauntlet, I showed them some film of what life was like for an intensively reared bird. A standard broiler house chicken. He lives in a shed with about 40,000 other birds. But what I really and wanted was for the town to come to my shed and see this for themselves. And so I invited them to do just that. And I was thrilled when some of the Millway crowd overcame their stage fright to say a few words. But we can make a difference, collectively. Let's see how far we can go on this, everybody. That's what I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Then I threw in what I hoped would be the clincher. So if we could have the lights down, guys. Hello, lovely people of Axminster. Uh, Mr. Oliver here. Uh, I am here in Seas Farms, um, and I'd like to say I've had a lovely day today. Well, the first half was nice when I went to the free range chickens. Uh, in this part, it hasn't been so lovely, actually. It's been quite revolting and disgusting. Um, listen, I really support what Hugh's doing here. It's a fabulous idea. Come and see how these things are living, how they're pissing and shitting all over each other, the smell. And you know what? Me and Hugh won't even have to say anything to you because you make your own mind up. Cheers, guys. Have a great night. And Hugh's buying the drinks, by the way. Thank you, thank you, Jamie. Thank you for coming, and the cider is now being served. Thank you. Your, your blue Next star. time on Hugh's Chicken Run, I finally get to talk to the supermarket. I do have a problem with the label. The Millway gang face up to the final reckoning. Are you ready? Push. Right, right hit the button. Right. There you go. Sorry, hold on. They've also and my campaign moves up to a whole new That's level. Pretty ambitious then, really. Where do you start? I think you've got the wrong town, basically. And the chicken run concludes tomorrow at nine. And find out how to make a free-range chicken go further with great recipe ideas at channel4.com slash food. Well, coming up next on four, the F word is used in shameless, but it's not the one you're thinking of. And then at five past 11, discover what it's really like for those farming in Britain today with the award-winning The Lie of the Land.